So to start this job, first you want to raise and support the truck safely. Then you're going to want to have to take off this hubcap slash lug nut cover and then remove the wheel. I'm using a 22 millimeter socket. First thing I'm going to do is remove this bracket that holds the brake hose and the ABS wire to the upper control arm. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. My next step is going to be to remove this tie rod end nut with a 21 millimeter socket. If your tie rod is stuck in there, then use a hammer, tap right here on the knuckle until it breaks free. Right there I saw it move means it broke free. Now the knuckle can pivot freely, which is exactly what we want. Next, using an 18 millimeter wrench, break the upper ball joint nut free. If it's on very tight and you can't get it with just a wrench, you can use a rubber mallet on the wrench. Just be very careful. So for me, the upper control arm is actually separating as I'm undoing this nut, which is a good sign. That means it's not stuck in there. If for you it is stuck in there and the nut is just coming off with the, with the ball joint staying in, after you've removed the nut, put it back on a few threads and hammer right here on the knuckle. That's going to free up your ball joint. Okay, remove your nut fully. And then because mine broke free, it's actually going to come right out of the knuckle. If yours didn't, this is when you would put the nut back on, hammer right here. Now unfortunately on this vehicle to take the upper control arm out, you're going to have to take the strut out, which means I'm going to take off these three nuts up top that secure the strut to the frame. These are 19 millimeter nuts. They shouldn't be too tight. Okay, I'm going to leave this one on and then I'm going to take these off completely. Okay, with only a few threads holding this one on, I'm going to move to the bottom. From underneath, you can see both of these 15 millimeter mounting bolts for the strut. Take those out. In my case, the tabs on this uh, captive nut broke, so I'm going to have to hold this nut with locking pliers. Okay, remove this last nut. At this point, there's nothing holding the strut on. This truck actually has a leveling kit in it, so the strut is under more pressure than if it didn't have one. So I'm gonna be very gentle with this. Pry it out right here. There we go. If it didn't have this, it would have just been free by now. Now take the strut down. And out comes your strut. And now you can access the control arm bolts to pull them out. Next, let's take out these bolts here and here that hold on the upper control arm. Pay attention to how these two cam bolts are positioned. This is what's going to affect your alignment and you want to get it as close as possible to how it was before you go to your alignment shop to get it realigned after you've finished installing the part. 21 millimeter socket, remove both of these nuts. Remove the outer cam bolt guide first, and then remove the whole bolt with the inner guide. Do the same thing to this rear bolt, and now you can remove your control arm. Take your new control arm, and try to slide it into the hole. Whichever one of your bolt holes lines up first, go ahead and put that bolt through. And to line up the other one, don't be afraid to use a hammer. When you're hammering right here, pay attention to your ball joint boot. Don't damage it. Once that's lined up, insert your bolt. 
These bolts have already had grease put on them, so I'm not going to do anything, but usually you'd want to either put grease or anti seize on the middle of it so it doesn't seize up. And once you've positioned your cam bolts to sort of where they were before, let's snug these up. And before you finalize snugging them up, make sure your control arm is sitting basically parallel with the ground. That's going to put the bushings into the same area where they would be if the vehicle was on the ground and the suspension was loaded. Otherwise, if you, if you tighten it like this and then the vehicle goes on the ground, these are going to twist and prematurely wear. Okay, leave that like that. And now torque these to 140 foot-pounds. Next, you want to reinstall your strut. Slide it in. The top bolts, make sure that they're lined up to how they're supposed to be. In order to temporarily secure the strut in here, you can start one of your nuts. That's going to prevent it from falling back out. With the help of a pry bar, if needed, pry down on this lower control arm and push the strut up into place and install your bolts. Again, because this truck has a leveling kit, it's putting the suspension at a weird angle, so I'm going to have to use a pry bar to move the bottom of the strut a little bit so it can line up with the hole. Once it does, my bolt can slide right through. Because I'm using a new strut, I'm uh, starting on some nuts as opposed to the factory captive hardware that sits right there and locks itself on. So because of that, I'm going to have to use a wrench to hold these while I tighten them up. And second one. All right, you're going to torque these to 37 foot-pounds. Obviously, if you have the factory hardware, you're going to go from the bottom and torque the bolt. With the help of a pry bar, pry the control arm down. Make sure that doesn't get pinched. Once your threads have come through the knuckle, go ahead and start on your nut, and now you can let go. So once this is bottomed out, make sure you snug it up real tight because you can't really torque this nut right here. The torque is technically 37 foot-pounds, but you can't get a torque wrench in here, so I'm going to make it nice and tight, and then I'll line up my cotter pinhole. Install your, install your new cotter pin. And make sure you bend it so that it's out of the way of everything and locked in. The next thing is to install your Zerk fitting. That's going to allow you to grease this ball joint. Snug it up, don't over tighten it. These break very easily. The next step is to attach your brake hose and ABS wire bracket. I put some anti seize underneath where the bolt goes through so it doesn't rust into place. Next, I'm going to get the tie rod reattached. Torque this to 44 foot pounds and reattach the rest of your top strut mounting nuts. These nuts get torqued to 37 foot pounds, but I can't bend my torque wrench at this angle, so uh, I just made them tight with my ratchet. All right, last step is to put the wheel back on. Once all of your lug nuts are started, go ahead and bottom them out and then torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Okay, tighten all the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds. And don't forget about your hubcap slash lug nut cover.